Hey, what's up everyone? Pastor Jeff here. Thanks so much for checking out Rhythm Church's YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest content that we release. Hey, if this message that you're about to watch speaks to you, we'd love to know that. So go ahead and leave a comment in the comments below and hit that like button. And again, if it inspires you, which we pray that it does, if it encourages you, be sure to share it. Share it with somebody else. Hey, we believe in the mission and the vision at Rhythm Church. And if you do as well, we would love for you to partner with us financially. So go to MyRhythmChurch.com, hit that support button, and again, partner with us in making a huge impact in North County, San Diego. Thanks so much, and we pray again that this message inspires you. Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks so much for having us in your home today. Thanks for yeah. joining us for church, and we're just we're humbled that you guys would, uh, would hang out with Rhythm Church today. Um, I'm Jeff, I'm the lead pastor. This is my wife, Erin. Hi, Rhythm. Man, we miss seeing your faces. Yep. But we are so, so thankful uh, for everything you guys are doing in your homes. Mm -hmm. All the prayers you're praying, yeah. um, the people you're encouraging. We just feel so loved by you and are sending our love your way. A hundred percent. And we cannot wait until we get to gather all together again. But until then, let's let's have church at home. Let's do church. Let's do it. Yeah. Man, I love that woman. We will be practicing no social distancing in our house whatsoever. No six feet apart. That's right. Just That's just real close, real close, baby. Mm, love her. Mm, all right. Okay. So let's get into the word. Everybody, turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Acts, Acts chapter number eight. We're gonna read verses one through thirteen. If you're newer to your Bible. That's fine. Um, just open to the front of the Bible. You're going to find a table of contents. Look in the New Testament section. You're going to see Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then the, the book Acts, A-C-T-S. Go to the page number and then find the big number eight, the little number one. We're going to read verses one through 13. Um, as you're turning there, hey, make sure that this week, every single day, go to MyRhythmChurch.com because we're going to have new content up for you every single day. You're going to have uh, some some video stuff. So actually my wife and I, we're going to get together and we're going to talk about some things and she's just so full of wisdom and she's awesome. You're not going to want to miss that. We're going to find, you're going to find stuff for kids, kids content, kids ministry stuff. You're going to find uh, worship playlists, um, other interactive things. And then you're going to find what we're praying through that day as a church, because as a church, we really, we believe in prayer. We believe that God moves through prayer. And so uh, go there and find out what it is we're praying for that day. Matter of fact, just make make rhythm myrhythmchurch.com like your home whenever you open up your internet explore 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 is so old <laughs> don't just please safari i don't know Goop, whatever there is chrome whatever you're doing just make it like your very first thing that pops up can you do that i think you can do that yeah you can do that so do it okay all right acts chapter number eight if you're there say amen amen if you're not, just press pause, get there, and then press play. Okay, ready? Here we go. Acts 8, verse 1, it says this. It says, On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. Stephen had just been, he's actually the first martyr. He'd just been stoned for his faith and Anyway, so they're, they're burying him. They, they mourn deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Now, those who had been scattered preached the word everywhere they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Now watch this. Now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in this city and amazed people in Samaria. He boasted, he boasted that he was somebody great. And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. Now they followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. They followed him because they, sorry, I just read that. But when they believed Philip 
as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished at the great signs and miracles he saw. Today, as, as we continue in our Faith Over Fear series, I just I want to speak briefly on this idea of being digital missionaries. Digital missionaries. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we get to gather in our homes, Lord, with our families, on our couches, Lord, some of us still in our pajamas, in our comfy cozies, Lord, um, or whether maybe we're, we're, we're you know, out and <clears throat> maybe we're just watching on our phone or wherever it is, just thank you, Lord, for the technology we have today to gather and to gather around your word. We just ask now, Lord, that your, your word would speak to us. Mm-hmm. Jesus, that it would open up our hearts and open up our minds, God, that we have encouragement and conviction from it all in one. But Lord, ultimately, we just, we pray that at the very end of this time that we have together, at the very end of this, this video, at the very end of church today, Lord, that we just, we find ourselves trusting you more mm-hmm. with greater faith than ever before, greater belief and greater idea of purpose in our lives in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. I, um, uh, this whole you know thing right now that's going on with grocery stores being packed out with people, not necessarily with goods. Um, you know, like Costco, there's lines out the door. It's a trip. I'm not necessarily like a, a grocery shopper, but I am somebody that loves to go to Costco. Absolutely <laughs> love Costco. Costco's like my favorite. I, like there's something like Costco's therapy for me. I don't know if any anyone else out there can relate, but sometimes I just like to go to Costco, grab a car, and just like wander the aisles, you know. And um, back when they would give samples, like I love just sampling whatever I could. And um, but I would go there, and I always ask my wife. Hey, is there something that we need to get? Is there some kind of like, send me with a list, like send me with a list of items. And even sometimes I will go to the grocery store for her. Now she usually does most of the grocery shopping. When we were first married, we grocery shopped together. It was kind of romantic and kind of like dating and whatnot, but afterwards I just got over it. So, so we, um, she would send me, um, so she'd send me sometimes with a list, right? But grocery stores and same, but more likely with Costco, I get in there and I just kind of get overwhelmed and I get enamored and like, I kind of start getting like, um, I want to buy this too. And I want to get this. So the list of like five things she sent me with turns into like a list of 12 things I buy. And inevitably, because I'm so like off in my own world or I'm getting lost in different aisles, I come back missing a few different items. Like the mission that I was sent with I don't necessarily accomplish because I'm just kind of hanging out and enjoying Costco. I'm having a good time. I'm, you know, I want to buy this. I'm going to check that out right now, right? This relates to the Bible, I promise you. (laughs) Because what we've just seen here, what we've just seen in Acts chapter 8 is kind of this realization that the church had been sent off with this mission but it wasn't necessarily accomplishing the full thing. There, there were a few items that were left off the list. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you this. So in, in Acts chapter, we're gonna turn back there if you can, Acts chapter one, when Jesus is about ready to ascend into heaven, he goes to his disciples, people everywhere, and he says this, he says in Acts chapter one, he says, verse eight, but you will receive power, Acts 1, eight, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses, or you'll be my representatives in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, right off the bat, man, the church starts to take off. They pray, the Holy Spirit comes, power. Peter gets up, he preaches, and Acts chapter 2 and 3,000 people get saved, and, and then they, uh, they get baptized, and it's just this awesome time. And, and you read in uh, chapter 2, verse 46 uh, and 47, it says, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Mm-hmm. So like there's this great time of favor and the church is growing in Jerusalem, right? And then every once in a while you have these, these like little setbacks, but they're mainly with the apostles where they'll get arrested and there's some persecution there. But overall, as the church 
They're actually doing pretty well. They're actually pretty comfortable, right? And then you read in Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35, it says, all the believers were one heart and one mind. Like, this is just amazing, right? No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and grace and God's grace was so powerfully at work in all of them that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land and houses sold them, and brought the money from the sales, put it at the apostles' feet, and is distributed to anybody that had need. Like there's just it's it's this great thing that's taking place and and they're they're loving life being believers together. They're loving life being the church. They're they're pretty comfortable at this time. They're enjoying the favor of all the people. And again, every once in a while somebody gets arrested and whatnot. But but ultimately for the whole, they're they're doing all right. As a matter of fact, they're doing so good that one of the biggest complaints they have is um, some of the, uh, the widows are like, we're not getting our food like the other widows are getting. So can we make sure that we're getting our food like they're getting their food? Like that's like the biggest gripe for that season. Well, then what happens is this. Then all of a sudden there's this massive, like there's a massive persecution that breaks out against the church because the, the maybe there was, there was some underlying friction that was building and and uh, a large sect of, of the Jews didn't like the Christians anymore. And so this massive persecution breaks out. And what was originally supposed to take place out of Acts chapter one, verse eight, we see starting to take place now in Acts chapter eight, verse one, where they're facing like opposition. And now they have to decide, what are we gonna do with this? Because this persecution broke out. Now they get going to Judea. Now they get going to Samaria. See, we have to see even ourselves right now that we're facing some opposition. As a church, this is like the craziest thing that's ever happened. We're not allowed to gather. And it's not like we're allowed to gather because of the, uh, we're being persecuted for our faith, but we just, we're trying to stop a spread of a virus. And so now we're trying to do something new. We're trying to do something different. But we could easily as the church say, man, this, this sucks, this is, this is lame, we're just gonna wait until we can get back together. Or we can see this time of opposition as a time of opportunity. Yes. Yeah. For everyone at home, sitting right now in your houses, the opposition that we're facing, this virus that we're facing, it's just, a, it's just time for opportunity. So each of these guys, as they went out, they didn't see it as, man, I gotta run and I gotta go hide. No, they saw this now as opportunity to go and to preach the gospel to originally the places they were supposed to be going anyways. Like, um, like Judea and Samaria. And as they go, they're just proclaiming the message that God has given them. And they could do this because of the technology of the time. See, watch this. So um, at that time, maybe you've heard the, the, the phrase, all roads lead to Rome, because at that time, all roads, literally, they led to Rome. But it just meant that there was this incredible system of highways. That was their technology. They were able to travel these roads very easily and get to places that they needed to go. And so as Philip goes and he goes to Samaria, he's then able to carry that message. Today, we have to take advantage of the technology that we have, yeah. that you literally can travel the world from your home on your couch, that you can get into it, like what we're doing right now, like I'm in your house. <laughs> we're hanging out today. I'm in your house because of technology, because we've leveraged, we've seen this as opposition, but we've also seen now the opportunity that can come out of it. We can get the message out more than ever before. We can preach the gospel yes. all over the place. And I think the church, honestly, if I can just be completely honest, the church needed this and needed a little bit of a shakeup because we're so used to people coming to Jerusalem. Yeah. yeah. We're so used to people coming to our place, but now we're being forced to go into other places. Okay. Now we're being forced to live this out. Our perspective has to change. Our perspective has to change. Really seeing this is, man, such a great opportunity. Like think about all the things that have happened now in this last week, week and a half because of this. Like you're having church in your house. When was the last time you had church in your house? And I know some of us are like, super spiritually do this. We turn on worship music and, and you know, we maybe watch messages together and do this stuff, but, but now we're doing it more on the regular. You're having church in your home. How powerful is that? Yeah. In, uh, in Romans chapter eight, 
verse 28, it says that, and we know that in all things God works for the good, in all things God works for the good of those who love him and have been, a call, and have been called according to his purpose. We have all been called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. And now he's taking this bad situation and he's turning it for the good. This is when the church rises up in times like this. This is when the church, the church shines and it should shine because it's the light. It shines in times of opposition. It shines when, when you study, like if you get into, I'm a bit of a history uh, nerd, absolutely love history, hated math. Uh, not a big fan of science, love history, mainly just because it's a story, just one big story. But when you study history and you study the church and you study plagues, um, that's when the church rises up. That's when the church starts to take care of people. That's when the church so shines because when everyone is running out, we're the ones running in. Yeah. When, when, when everyone's trying to, to bail, we're, the, we're getting in there and, and we're talking with people and we're loving people and we're meeting needs. We're... Um, we're basically, we're helping be the deliverance crew for the world. And I think more now than ever, that's who we need to be. Mm -hmm. We have to shift our perspective a little bit within that. I think it's also important too, that we take this time of opposition and turn it into opportunity um, in, in the way that we, uh, it's like this, uh, it's, it's practice your F words. <laughs> Uh, no, hold on. Like some of you guys are like, man, I already been doing that, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks for the confirmation. See, honey, the pastor said to practice my F words. I'm no, I don't, I don't mean like practice the F word, but I mean the F, the F words, faith, family, friends, and finances, faith, family, friends, and finances. The right now is a great time for you to, to go deeper in your faith. Now is the time for you to like read that book that you've always like said you're going to read, but just have, you haven't had time to read it. Um, now's the time to get more in, into the Bible than ever before. Now's the time to just in your house to turn on worship music as you guys are hanging out and as you're like, you know, working from home and have that worship music playing. Now's the time for you to dig deeper into your faith and to do so with, with your family. I mean, like, how powerful is that? Mm -hmm. Now is the time. Now is the time to grow closer as a family. Um, I, and I know for some of us, the idea of being stuck at home, like with our spouse, isn't necessarily like the best. And I know sometimes even with your kids, you start to go, I don't, I don't know. But, but what a fantastic time for you guys just to slow down. Mm -hmm. you, you're not driving anybody to practices anymore. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not caught up with the have tos. You're not running home so, to make dinner so that everyone eats separately and then has to go off to, you know, like this person to dance and this person to soccer. And no, you're, you're just in it together now. And you get to have good focused, hopefully faith filled time with your family. You get to go from being human doings to human beings, mm -hmm. like human being, like be together, like just be together. And you know what, if, if, if you start to realize there's points of friction, that's actually a good thing because you're starting to see cracks in the foundation of your family that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. And if you don't take care of those cracks, eventually your whole house is gonna fall. Mm -hmm. Well, that was really good. That's not even in my notes, yeah. people. That was just Thank right you. there. So mm -hmm. it's, maybe start to notice those cracks a little bit and maybe start to figure out, okay, we might need counseling and let's go get some counseling. We might need to take care of some stuff, but if we don't have this time to slow down, man, we miss out on this opportunity. Think about friends. Who are those people you haven't connected with for years? FaceTime them, Zoom call them, Google hang out with like old college roommates and buddies or people you haven't talked to for such a, a long time. Get the Marco Polo app and like just video chat. mess chat, video message back and forth together. like. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of this time to connect with those friendships and to take the friendships that you have and go on a deeper level. Like, I know that we live like now and, you know, like we text all the time and, and all that stuff. But do you remember, do you remember when you would like call that special someone on the phone and you just talk for hours and hours and hours? It wouldn't even necessarily be about anything. You just wanted to talk. You just wanted to hear their voice and stuff. And uh, now is the time to do that with, well, with your spouse at home, <laughs> but like, but maybe just call up that old homie of yours and be like, man, how have you been? What's going on? Catch up on life. Some of you guys have friends that you haven't talked to for years. And now's the time to catch up with all of those years. So 
see the, op the opportunity in friendships and then finances, finances. Um, again, with all the craziness and the economy and what's taken place, it's really easy to have our faith for our finances drained. But now is the time, people, to pray for divine strategies for your finances. Mm -hmm. When you pray, divine, pray, actually pray divine strategies for all these things, because when you pray, God hears your prayers and he answers your prayers. And you'd be surprised what it is he's gonna help you do when your faith, in your families, in your friends, and in your finances, when you just pray for these divine strategies. But now is not the time to get greedy. Now is the time to be generous. Now is not the time to hoard. Now is the time to help when it comes mm -hmm. to the way that you treat your money. Be people of faith with your finances. Don't be scared. Don't be like the rest of the world. God takes care of us. Yes. God calls us to be wise, though. Side note. So don't, I'm not, again, I'm not saying be stupid with it, but God calls us to be wise, but God is the one who provides for us. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not the jobs, not the banks, not the government. It's God. So continue to keep your faith in the Lord when it comes to your finances. Oh, man. So let's pray. Like, how can we impact people? How can we turn this into opportunity? Secondly is this, post what you proclaim. So, so they saw the opportunity. Philip saw the opportunity, goes, starts preaching. But what does he preach? What is he proclaiming? What is he putting out there? The message of Jesus, the message of hope, the message of freedom, the message of love, grace, and mercy. Like that's what he's, that's what he's doing and people are listening to it. Like they're, they're, tuned, they're turning their ears and they're turning their attention. Right now, what are people turning their attention to? They're on their, they're, they're on their screens, they're on their TVs, they're on their devices. Like screen time is up astronomically right now in our nation. People are, they're like, they're on their phones. I'm on my phone constantly checking up like what's going on, what's happening, what's new with the news and the virus and all that different stuff. And, um, <clears throat> or what's, or, you know, or, or what's so-and-so up to, what did so-and-so up for lunch? I mean, like more now than ever before we're doing this. So we can post what we proclaim the message of Jesus. Um, you can create content that provokes fear, or you can create content, share content that provokes faith. Like it's up to you right now. Like you can Post, share, like, comment, mention, create content that's going to bring people to a new level in their faith. You can reach thousands of people. You can create community from your couch. Mm -hmm. That's good too. You can, you can create you can create community from your couch. And um, I'm just thinking, like personally, right now, uh, because again, as as a communicator, as somebody that's you know. On, on a, on a platform, I'm just, I'm being so careful with my words. As a matter of fact, in our, um, in our staff meeting that we had, probably the last one that we'll actually have together this last week, from now on it'll be like all virtual and everyone will stay in their homes and stuff. But um, as, we, as we talked uh, as a team, um, of course all six feet apart, except for George and Kaylee, because they're married. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> useless information for you. Well, it's not useless. I love you. No, anyway, okay. So as we talk, this is what we, this is what we, we say. We say we have to be careful of our language, the language that we use right now. Yeah. And that because it can come across so negative and it can come across and just create more fear as opposed to seeing like, like the church isn't shutting down. No, the church is just ramping up. Yeah. We're, 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 we have new ways to reach people. We're coming up with new strategies. We're coming up of, 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 of like, what are the wins for this season? Like, what does it look like to reach? How can we get the gospel into more people's ears and in, in front of more people's faces? And that's why, like, man, think about this. Okay, Rhythm Church brand new church, which is also kind of scary, like brand new church. And then <laughs> this happens. <laughs> but like in, in our short time, the, the 400 plus people that call rhythm home already, just within a short two months, um, the 130 plus people that volunteer on teams and lead and so on and so forth for our church. If just, if just us started to repost some of the content that rhythm's putting out, some of the faith-filled content. If we started to create some of those, uh, um, maybe even little videos ourselves, just talking about how much Jesus loves people, 
how much Jesus forgives, the great grace that's within that. If, if, we, if we started reaching out to um, uh, maybe the contacts in our phone and just asking them, how can we pray for you? Imagine the impact that we can have as the church. Again, the church isn't a building. The church is us. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all of us. Yeah. Like right now, we're having church, people. Yeah. If you're in your house by yourself, like nobody else there, hey, I'm, I'm with you. We're having church. Mm -hmm. If it's just you and your family right now, man, that's awesome. We're having church. We're, we're the church. And we can make such a great impact, yeah. huge impact. Mm -hmm. But we just got to post it. I'm going to post, like, this is the season to post what, what your message. Now is the season to post your message. Now is your season to post how much faith you have in Jesus and how you're trusting in Him and, and not necessarily anything else. But what, what then happens, so Philip is preaching. People are getting saved. And he runs into this dude named Simon. Simon the sorcerer. Now, um, Simon's got a big following Interesting, interesting thing about Simon is that he says like that he proclaims he's like, he's the man, you know? And so everyone kind of like follows him because of that. Also side note, uh, now's the time within your like social media, not necessarily to promote yourself, but maybe to promote Jesus. So that was just free for you. Um, <clears throat> but Simon has, has this following, it, it's sorcery, it's I'm great and man, follow me and listen to me and people people are it's like i almost see like simon as um a little bit of like opposition to the message of jesus the whole me me i'm great i'm good it's almost like this because i, I this was something I, I see a lot as i'm kind of like scrolling and web surfing or do you even see that say that anymore <laughs> surfing the way i'm like <laughs> Can't surf in the ocean now, so I'm just surfing the web. Um, <laughs> gosh, I'm dumb. Sorry. So, <laughs> okay, thanks. So, um, uh, I lost myself. Oh, this is I'm think I'm seeing a lot of like like uh, think positive, like positive positive thinking and stuff like that. And and I'm not anti positive thinking. I'd rather think positive than think negative any day. I mean, positivity's fantastic. Please, let's be we need more positivity in the world. But I've kind of seen this positive thinking almost become like a god to people. Mm. Yeah. Where um well what's gonna change things is if we just think positive. No, 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 no. What changes things is God's power. Yes. It's power over positivity. Yeah. Power over positivity. Again, please think positive. Please, like, yes. But, but thinking positive from a biblical perspective is to think on what God does, is yes. to think on God, and to remind ourselves constantly that God's in control, yeah. and it's God's power. So Philip comes with God's power yeah. and starts seeing stuff happen. If we want to see stuff happen, it's more about God's power. So yeah, sure, think positive, but let's get back to relying on the power of God in our yeah. lives and the power of God in our families. What is, what's going to help our country? What's going to help our nation? God's power. Yeah. God's power living in us and through us mm -hmm. via the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you in power, it's God's power that does this stuff, people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's God's power that heals. It's God's power that provides. Like, we cannot forget God's power in this. And if you're in a season where, man, it's hard for you to, to feel that, it's hard for you to even, you know, like maybe you're getting depressed and all that, that's even more so, that's the time to rely on God's power. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, But he said to me, my grace, this is Jesus speaking to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Yeah. My power is made perfect in weakness. Man, and aren't we weak right now? Yeah. Like as a, as a, as a, not just as a nation, but as the world, we are weak right now. Yeah. We are so weak, and it's in our weakness that his power is made strong. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Look, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to figure this out. I'm not wise enough to figure this out. I'm not strong enough to get my family through this, but Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus is. I'm not strong enough to get this church through this because believe me, man, I've been up at night like, Lord, you know, we, I, at the very end of all this, like, please, Jesus, just rhythm, because I can't, I can't do this. I can't come up with the right strategies. I can't come up with all that, but God can. Yeah. And God can speak those to me, and God can speak those to the staff, and God can speak those to you. 
and it's God's power that's going to do this. I don't, maybe some of you guys right now might be so fearful about your, your job situation and all of that. Please just continue to rely on his power. Mm -hmm. Rely on his power for all of this because he's great and he's yes. the one that's going to get us through this. Yeah. The, the thing about, and, and again, I, I'm not knocking positive thinking again, but po like positivity is like counterfeit power. It's like, um, it, it, it impacts you for like the moment, but, but it's God's power that, that truly like makes a lasting impact. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so don't rely on just positivity to impact you for that moment. Cause again, it, it won't, but God's power will, God's power will make a giant impact in your life. Um, Simon ends up getting saved, gives his life to Jesus. Pretty powerful. Um, later on, some other stuff happens. We won't get into that. It's for, for another day, but I just want to leave us with this. I, we don't wind down. <clears throat> um, each and every one of us, we, we have the opportunity to become digital missionaries. Just like Philip became basically a missionary as he was then sent out because of the opposition he faced, he turned it into opportunity. We can take this opportunity to become digital missionaries, going into different spaces and places than we've ever been before to proclaim the great news of Jesus. Here's the deal. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, like we read, you're going to be my witnesses, my representatives, in all Jerusalem. Now they, they got Jerusalem nailed. Remember we read one through seven, like Jerusalem was dialed. And then it took a, a persecution to break out for them to get to Judea and Samaria. And then as you read later, you see that Paul starts to go to the rest of the world. But if Philip was in Samaria, we can go to the rest of the world, people. I mean, we are, literally, we are the rest of the world. I mean, we're living in the rest of the world right now, but, but we have an opportunity like never before to go into the highways and the byways of the internet to get onto people's phones in front of their faces and to proclaim the great news of Jesus. So let me encourage you, please, let's not use this time to just Netflix and chill. <laughs> you know, let's not just use this time like, I mean, sure, catch up on shows. I'm gonna, I'm, my family and I are like watching movies every single night. But, but let's be purposeful in this time. Mm -hmm. Post what you proclaim, man, and, and rely on God's power. Yeah. Rely on God's power. Mm -hmm. We love you, church. We're praying for you. We believe in you. We're going to make all sorts of differences in this world. I can't wait. Next week's message, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about um, faith, the facts. Faith, the facts. It's oh, I like I just want to preach it right now, but I can't. So definitely tune in next Sunday. But hey, actually tune in tomorrow, Monday. We're gonna hang out myrhythmchurch.com. We love you guys. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Yeah, we thank you for this incredible opportunity that's laid before us as the church. Jesus, we just uh, ask for the wisdom, for the strategies, God, in order to see more people impacted with the hope that you've provided for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs>